This video is on fence fighting. Do you have a dog that runs back and forth and barks at the fence? Or anytime you're outside and the neighbor's dog comes out, or there's another person in the neighbor's yard, your dog runs back and forth barking at the fence, acting like they're going to eat whatever it is behind the fence? If so, this video is for you. This is Wish, my Border Collie, when she was about 10 months old at the height of her reactivity to dogs. And you can see with the fence, she's offering a default settle because she trusts me and she understands the scenario that there's a fence and she's safe when she's with me. You can also teach your dog a default leave it from people behind fences and things like balls being thrown, as well as vehicles like cars and motorcycles. And for me, my neighbors using heavy equipment or doing yard work. Good job, Wishy. You good. Here they come. <laughs> Good boy. This is Bliss, my Border Collie mix at 10 months old, learning to ignore high level distractions for his service dog work. Bliss, that was very good. You're so good. Yeah, you are. Ready? Good. Can you twirl? Spin. Good. Go to the field. Go to the field. Good. Ready? Can you sit? Wishy, sit. Wishy. Sit pretty. Wish sit pretty. Good. The training plan consists of using management and prevention to prevent your dog rehearsing the undesirable behavior in between training sessions. So this might mean that you need to get a visual blocker. Maybe you get a tiny, a couple pens or a very cheap fence to keep your dog in a smaller area where they can't see whatever it is that they react to. Maybe you take your dog out on a leash. This is a temporary uh, management and prevention scheme while you're training your dog. It's not for life. So when I moved to this new house, I did it a couple weeks and you know, the last seven years my dogs have been loose on my property, not barking. So really putting in the time and effort right at the start is worth it so that you can then be lazy and not train your dog the, for you know the rest of your dog's lifetime. So I think it's really important to put in the effort right at the start when you notice that some problem is starting to happen. So a leash, you can have your dog on a leash. Maybe you need to put on some music when you're outside because the dog is picking up on small noises. If your neighbor's dog is reacting to the jingle of your dog's collar, you might want to uh, silence your dog's collar so the other dog is less likely to react. Or maybe you put the music near the fence so that dog has to listen to uh, a sound. <laughs> and sorry, neighbor. <laughs> or maybe you put in a, a, a fountain, like a, a water fountain. But I find that uh, music is much better at hiding noises than something that sounds continuous. Okay, so you're using, uh, you're blocking the sound, you're blocking the sight. Maybe you uh, put up some, uh, you put some fencing up where the dog can't see through, or you're simply walking your dog on leash. Maybe your dog is so sensitized to your backyard that you just, instead of going back there in between training to take your dog to the toilet, you just walk them out the front door um, and take them, if hopefully you have a backyard and a front yard like I do, but if, if not, you're taking your dog out somewhere that they don't usually go and where the thing that they bark at is not there. So uh, it can be hard if you're trying to train your dog and they need to go to the bathroom <laughs> and, and they're, they're going to the bathroom and they're barking at the same time. So um, what, while you're doing the management and prevention, you're then also going to do training sessions where you go out with your dog on leash and every time they hear a noise, you're gonna mark and reinforce your dog before they think to bark. So you're reinforcing that absence of the behavior. 
If your dog is not um, able to eat treats in your backyard, you can first practice inside the house. You can even use recordings of noises of dogs barking or jingling collars, play the noise, feed a treat, play the noise, feed a treat, and reinforce your dog for settling on a mat. Then you can open the door, have the mat in front of your door, and you can even have a friend jingle a dog collar or play the sound of a dog barking uh, or make a panting noise. Lots of dogs will react to if just a human goes <laughs> like that. So you can practice all those scenarios so the dog is understanding, oh, when noises happen, I just relax. And then you can bring the mat further out into your yard and mark and reinforce when they hear the neighbor's dog or they hear activities going on on the other side of the fence. Because your dog is on a leash, if something were to happen that excites your dog, and they start to want to react, I suggest before they bark and you see them alert, you say, let's go and move inside the house. So if your dog's not taking treats, or if, you, if, you, if your dog is alerted and you say good, or yes, or click, and your dog doesn't look back, I would just say, let's go and go into the house because it's too much for the dog. Give the dog a break, don't let them rehearse the barking, and then go back a step. So if the dog got really aroused, you can wait a little bit, and then try again later when they're calm. Another idea is if your dog is really sensitized to your own neighbor's dog behind the fence, you can go places where there are other dogs behind fences and work from an extreme distance and work on the concept of dog, dogs behind fences that aren't the one that your dog really hates, which is sometimes, and when I say hate, um, it's just um, projection. It's uh, the dog doesn't really hate the other dog. The dog is sensitized and reacting more and more to a certain stimulus uh, rather than habituating. So what we're doing is we're breaking up the, the stimulus so that it's less intense so the dog can habituate to it and start to ignore it because it happens it's not a threat, it's not something exciting, they're not gonna get to play, they're not gonna get to interact. So we're teaching them by breaking up the stimulus that it's not exciting and something to ignore. Um, but if they're already sensitized, that means they're, get, they're reacting more and more, um, and in an extreme way, you can sometimes uh, make it easier for the dog by working with things that, they've, they've, that are different. So going to um, a dog park where you know dogs aren't gonna be off leash, um, and run towards you if that's an issue for your dog. And you can work far enough away that your dog can hear and see dogs behind a fence and learn to ignore them. Or maybe you just walk to another neighborhood where there's a friendly dog that doesn't bark and you can work on your dog seeing the dog behind a fence and not reacting. And then you can just see the dog and turn and walk away. So it's really about finding environments that are optimal for your training. Here's an example of using management and prevention. I previously used to have a wonderful visual barrier between my neighbor's yard and mine of trees and bushes, but one day, last year, he cut down all my trees and bushes so the dogs could see each other. Fortunately, I'd already put up a secondary barrier to prevent the dogs going nose to nose at the fence line. This is a cheap fence that I got online and at Home Depot for a couple hundred dollars and it's over a hundred feet long. And it also prevents snakes and rabbits from entering my property, as well as a wandering husky that got through my neighbor's fence. After installing a wooden privacy fence, now the neighbor's dogs don't have a need to stand and stare at the fence. Now, I'm not saying it's an easy problem to solve if your dog has been doing it for a long time, but if you've just moved somewhere new, you can use management prevention and training and stop the problem from becoming a really hard problem to crack. So, if you are already having this problem and your dog's rehearsed it a lot, it is going to take some training to get your dog to start doing the behaviors you want and ignoring whatever it is behind your fence. Now, this video is about using positive reinforcement to solve the issue. So the scientific way of describing what the training, scientifically what is happening with the training is differential reinforcement of an incompatible behavior. We're going to be teaching the dog a stronger behavior of relaxing and ignoring whatever it is that's a distraction. A lot of people believe that if you use positive reinforcement to work on something like teaching your dog not to bark out the window, not to bark at your gate, that it will teach your dog to uh, 
uh, ignore when like a, a burglar tries to break in or something unusual happens. And I can tell you as a fact um, that with my own dogs and my clients dogs, they do respond if something's out of the ordinary. Dogs are very intelligent and also they don't generalize well. So if we've practiced with all these distractions that keep happening, like they're used to the neighbor's dog, and then suddenly there's a bear in your yard, they're going to act differently. So um, when, I, uh, when, when there was a bobcat that was spying into my yard and looking at my little dogs, my border collie ro ran over and barked at the bobcat where he wouldn't bark at the neighbor's dogs. And actually the reason that I'm making this video is yesterday there was a man in my property cutting one of my trees uh, that I had not asked to be there and I was taking a nap and I hear barking and my friendly border collie Bliss is looking out the window barking at this man and then when I go out uh, Bliss is all friendly but he did notice that the behavior was different that the person shouldn't have been in my yard because it wasn't the same setup as when I have guests over. So uh, dogs are highly intelligent. They're really good at seeing what is out of, the, out of the norm. If you have a super friendly dog, like a pit bull that loves all people, maybe they're going to wag their tail when the burglar comes in, but they were gonna do that anyway without any training. The reason that I think it's a great idea to use positive reinforcement to train a behavior you want your dog to do when outside and the neighbor's dog is at the back of the fence or there's a noise or they see someone. Um, the reason that I think it's a wonderful idea to use positive reinforcement and train a behavior you want is that if you were to use punishment, you're not telling the dog what you do want them to do. So they might think of other things to do. And then the punishment continues. So you really have to backtrack and then you have to train something you do want your dog to do anyway. So why not do it right from the start and see how it goes? That's what I suggest. Um, I find it highly beneficial because you can train your dog that when they see or hear specific sounds like the neighbor's dog going crazy at the back of their fence, that it means to just, it's a default leave it, to ignore the dog. And so then you don't even have to tell your dog what you want them to do. They know they can do anything, play with whatever they want, when uh, that dog is barking, it just means to leave it. And it's just like what I like to call wind in the trees. The dog is realizing, oh, it's like the bird singing, the leaves blowing, it means nothing. So that's basically essentially what you're training your dog. If you were to use punishment, I have seen that sometimes instead of barking, like if a dog is uh, punished for making a vocalization, they will then run back and forth in front of the fence overexcited. And what can happen is that you can get the side effects of the dog being overexcited or stressy um, and being overexcited and pulling when seeing other dogs on a walk or something like that. Or if they're not running back and forth, they could start to circle and pace. Uh, in the backyard or whine. So you might get whining and excitable behavior. Um, so if you're using a, a startle or punish a pain to stop a behavior of arousal, sometimes it can make the animal more aroused because seeing the dog predicts a sudden excitement, a, a startle feeling. Um, or a, pain, a feeling of pain. So that can't, uh, that isn't as functional at calming the body down as eating food, which is, um, puts your dog's body into the rest and digest mode. So if your dog is hearing the sound of other dogs barking and that's uh, predicting they're gonna go into the rest and digest mode, um, that for me is highly beneficial. And so <laughs> for me, uh, when we go out and the neighbor's dogs are barking, it means it's time to work for treats. And so I have my dog's full attention. They're completely ignoring the neighbor's dogs barking at us and we can get on with our day. So basically me and my dogs, my dogs and I, we do not even hear the sounds that are going on because we're focused on our relationship together and having fun outside rather than what's going on outside. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. See you later.